Hello, I'm Mr. Sandemon, and today I will show you how to draw and color chubbicorn. First, we'll need a pencil and an eraser, and then we're going to use a variety of color pencils and markers. Uh, for chubbicorn's body, we'll need that aqua color, a lilac, and an ultramarine blue, and then I'm using two light blue Prismacolor markers. You can also use Copic or other markers if you need. Uh, for Chebicorn's horn, I'll use a yellow Prismacolor marker with a yellow-orange color pencil and then a sienna color pencil or brown. And then lastly, for Chebicorn's eyes, we'll just use a black color pencil. Okay, the first step is I'm going to draw a uh, hot dog shape. Chebicorn is a mysterious creature uh, in the Shelby series. He's uh, believed to be part unicorn and uh, part water balloon. Okay, so there are his eyes, and then he has these curving cylindrical feet. He'll be uh, leaping through the air. And then we have his hind legs there, going upward, and then another leg back. So the sketch is very light. Um, keep it light first before you, know, you feel confident about the drawing. There's his horn, and then his mouth, kind of a, a chibi-style mouth. Now I'm going to go back and erase some of the lines I don't need with my eraser and then go back uh, and solidify the drawing a little bit more and notice the drawing seeing a little bit darker adding some reflective lines or little lights in his eyes now for the coloring first we will uh, establish a an area of uh, the blue marker so it'll be it'll kinda serve as the uh, core shadow and then we'll do some highlight outlines. Chubbicorn is what I call um, an opalescent colored character, so which means he has a uh, kind of a pearlescent maybe, I guess another way to describe it. Very shiny, uh, almost plastic looking, very reflective, but also a variety of colors. So I'm still establishing the core shadow area with the marker, just going over some main areas there, blocking them in. And then I will go over with my aqua color pencil. And you notice how I hold the pencil. Um, this looks, this video is, is sped up, but you can see that I'm coloring in a, like a circular motion. And this just hides a lot of the stroke marks of uh, the pencil if I were to you know, go back and forth with it over and over. I want it to look smooth and very shiny. So I'm just going over the edge, switching up to the lilac to give it that opalescent quality, different areas along the outside. Also softening up some of that core shadow with some lilac or purple. Now with the ultramarine, some darker areas. And the ultramarine will serve as uh, the darkest part of the core shadow. So this will just give it a little more dimension. You notice I'm keeping the bottom of Chebicorn's belly white. That also adds to a little bit of a reflective, reflective light because he is jumping over a white surface. So you do have some white light coming back up. And that's really important when you're drawing something cylindrical or round, is to have a little bit of reflected light coming back up. And then I will fully shade in his back hind leg and the furthest front leg. Give it a little bit of a darker shadow. And now some little shine marks up on the top that change color. And I'll go back with the aqua. So it's pretty much just back and forth. I, I mark some areas and then go back with another color and then just get a get a sense for it. Once I feel pretty confident about an area, I'll let it go. Um, key is not to overwork it. And if I were to keep going back and forth and coloring more and more, then I would have less white area and it would look less reflective. And with Prismacolors, you can actually uh, do what's called burnishing, where you lay down some basic coats of color, and then once you are happy with it, you can go back with a final color. Um, in this case, I would use white. I'm not going to do this in this video, but um, you can actually go over with a layer of white, and it gives it more of a milky, like reflective surface, and it'll seal the color, like you're polishing the surface of the paper. So I've established a little bit of light blue in the, in the reflective light in the bottom part of the belly underside of Chubcorn. And now I'm going to add more coarse shadow coming up under his chin or the chest area with that dark ultramarine just to have some more contrast. And then 
darkening that front leg a little bit more. It's also really important to know your where your light source is coming from. In this case, it's directly above him. So you can see all the light areas are closer to the top. And then especially in the legs too, you can see the light that's the purest white um, and everything else fades down into darkness or darker colors. A little coarse shadow on the hind leg there. Okay, now for Chabacorn's horn. Chabacorn's horn is gold. So what I'll do is lay down a first layer of marker, um, and then as that's drying, it'll actually lighten. And while it's, once it's dry, or while it's drying, I can go over it with a yellow-orange color pencil. And you notice I left some areas white, just on the outside of the horn there. And then lastly, I like to add uh, brown, just for the uh, edge, to outline the different segments of his horn. Now for the eyes, black color pencil the initial outline, and then some reflective outlines there, and then I just simply color it in. And I like to get fancy sometimes and I, I fade it down. I color darker near the top and then fade it down to like a lighter gray near the bottom reflective circle there. And then now for a shadow, just to give a little more dimension to the picture. This is a quick shadow. I mean, I could really spend more time and fade the shadow out on the edges and make it darker in the middle, but this just gives you an idea of where the shadow goes. And some last minute touch-ups with the ultramarine. And that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.